Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your mowers will practically build Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. Welcome to today's show. Today on Echoes from the Chalkboard, we are going to be looking at a school building that mm, is quite old and it's no longer standing, but during its lifetime, it actually housed several different schools. We're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about its facelift. And pretty cool, um, pretty cool story behind this particular building. For those of, uh, those of the viewers out there that are my age who uh, went to Salt Lake City schools back in the 60s and 70s, they will remember Horace Mann as being one of the schools that, um, that several kids went to. So today we're going to look at uh, what was at one time known as Horace Mann, but had several other names. So stick with Mad Dog Merv, and let's get started on Echoes from the Chalkboard. Subject of today's video. Now, this um, this school that's on that site for most of the 20th century was known as Horace Mann. But this is the original building, and we're going to talk a little bit about it here in a minute. Of note, this is the plot of land where the school would have sat. However, just kind of where that tree is in the middle. Notice on the far left that little white building. You'll see that again in some of the other pictures. So I'm going to read to you a little of the history of this particular building. This comes from a document written in the 1940s for the uh, 50th anniversary of the school district. So here you go. Horace Mann Junior High School. The original building was built by the Salt Lake Library and Scientific Society in 1896 at a cost of $68,000. On January 10th of 1898, the Salt Lake Library Society deeded the lot to the University of Utah, which in turn deeded it to the state of Utah. The state of Utah sold it to the Salt Lake City School Board of Education on January 12th of 1911. After the burning of the building housing the high school, now so that you know, Salt Lake High School was in a different part of downtown at the time, it had burned down, they were looking for a new place. Classes were moved to the University of Deseret buildings, which were more than just this building, there were other buildings nearby where West High currently sits, and check out that video for more information. This was not large enough for all purposes, so with the consent of the Mormon Church, the Science Department was moved to the Deseret Museum Building, or Science Building. When the East High School was opened, the Science Building was no longer needed by the West High School, and during the year 1914-1915, the building became the Monroe School, and was considered a preparatory school. In 1915, the name was changed to West Junior High School, which that's what a preparatory school was known way back then. In 1919, construction was started on a 16-room addition, a two-story fireproof building, and the building was occupied on November of in 1920. This was unlegible in the original document. The cost was $146,000. In 1933, remodeling of the old science building, which is the original building we're talking about today, began and was completed in 1935, at which time the name was changed to Horace Mann Junior High School. No part of the old building is now apparent. The old roof was removed and replaced at a higher level, making the complete story out of former attic space the face brick was replaced with new brick to harmonize with the addition and the entire inside was remodeled. In 1936 the construction was began on another addition which included two gymnasiums, one to be used as an auditorium, locker and shower rooms, classrooms and restrooms. 
So there is one glaring mistake in this document, and that is that the building itself was originally built in 1889, not 1896. Um, I have too many other documents that, that verify that. So this story that somebody had written, obviously they got a wrong date on it, which that does happen. Okay, so let's take a look at another angle of the original building when it belonged to the university. Very beautiful structure. Okay, here is the uh, 1911 Sanborn map. You can see at that time it says Salt Lake City High School. Um, what is that? Prep? Oh, Annex. Annex, sorry. But you can see how it sits on the property there. You can see the white building in the modern day picture just to the right of that old school. So very neat how we could pick and pinpoint right where the building sat on the lot. So we've seen that this school had at least four different names, but now let's take a look at how this building changed over the years. Here is a great picture of it shortly after it was built in the 1890s. And here it is after one of the rebuilds. Uh, this is a, a very similar angle, that same corner um, on the southwest corner of the building and you can see it does not look anything like its original self and here we are looking from the north east corner at the old building beautiful beautiful structure why on earth you would modify this thing at all it was just gorgeous but uh, yeah the district did and here's the pile that they came up with uh, you can match up several of the windows with the original uh, yuck too bad they did that anyway um, here's another angle you can see the west facing uh, part of the building there and that western part of the building I don't know if it was rebuilt or torn down and rebuilt as this but this is the office area that was west of the main main building that stood forever this picture is supposed to be from 1965. It's not. It's got to be from the late 60s, early 70s. We'll talk about that later. But let's get into the changes this building actually made. This beautiful building stayed looking like this till 1933. So from 1889 to 1933, it looked like this. Very, very majestic, very, very beautiful. Um, then they decided to add that 16 room 1919 addition to the west of this building and you can see that building here um, the tree covers the kind of connecting hallway uh, make out the smokestack there that's in the back of the building this is a great shot along uh, second north in Salt Lake in fact looking at that same area as this picture that's that's really pretty neat uh, being able to kind of match that up so anyway I digress back to where we were so in uh, 1933 the old as they called it science building underwent a major um, a major rebuild and you can see the scaffolding here look at these cars isn't that cool oh yes those old 32 Ford, and I can't make out what the other one is. Looks like a maybe a Plymouth. Anyway, uh, this is a good shot of the original science building with the 16 room addition to the west of it there. Now, this series of photographs is very interesting to me. Here we are. We have the old science building. They're starting to work on the face of it, they are starting to take the roof off and you can see here they're pulling the roof off and they're going to use that attic space for another um, another story but you can see the bricked in windows here the original fire escape and you can see the outline of the old science building here because they haven't finished the brick fascia yet on the back side pretty amazing you can still make out what the old building uh, the shape of the old building pretty incredible 
a group of photographs here. By the time I worked uh, for the district, this area here, we would have these big mass meetings and this would all be parking, overflow parking for those meetings. Anyway, there's a great view of the building with the new fascia on and it looks nice and modern. It's too bad they had to destroy that beautiful old uh, looking building. Anyway, so here's the inside that they went ahead and gutted a good portion of the inside when they did this remodel. This is a 1934 picture. Great picture. You usually don't get um, pictures of interior rebuilds. Here's some uh, stairways that they are uh, putting reinforced concrete in. That's really a neat picture. Lucky to, lucky to have this series of photos for sure. And here we are with the finished product looking from the northeast at the building. And this is uh, in the mid 30s, it looks like. Now, notice that they've put another addition on the left hand side of the building here. I'm not sure exactly what those are, other than for sure a uh, staircase, but. Uh, this may be the addition of a gym and auditorium. Great picture here showing that whole area of the street with both of the buildings together looking very nice and very modern in the 30s. And here's a great picture again with uh, some of the old cars. Now this is a neat picture because I know where this is. This is looking into that old quote science building the 1898 building from the hallway that connected the two buildings uh, so there's one interior shot here's another one I believe those windows on the right hand side are facing east so this would be the back side of the building after the remodel this is obviously a library and here are the two buildings in the 1930s looking very modern for the time. That is actually a pretty neat looking building. It's just too bad they had to, you know, take the uh, beautiful old facade off. So in the 1960s, I believe it was 1962, I'm not sure if they tore down the uh, 1919 uh, rebuild or if they just remodeled it, but to the west of that they added a beautiful auditorium uh, on the left hand side of the photo here was the office areas so again it was either remodeled or torn down and rebuilt but this addition was added as well and here you can see the original 1898 building in the very very back with all of these other additions added to it and that Maverick is uh, from 1970 through 1972 tells me this picture was taken sometime after late 1969. And here we are, back to the original, beautiful, as it was called, the science building um, that was part of the um, University of Deseret. So thanks for joining us today, folks. I hope you found this interesting, and we will see you again soon.